And what's a little danger ever done? Except drawn out the fire. I'd go there any time. I don't see why people fuss so much about the forest. What? My point is simply... I'm not sure that honour and bravery are even fashionable anymore. <laughs> Has anyone ever told you? You're the perfect Ravenclaw. <sighs> Seems to me if you're in detention every day, you're more likely to catch a wandering eye. If you know what I mean. Ah! So the fact that he doesn't get detention, in your eyes, makes him more appealing. <laughs> Nobody likes a boring person. It's the best feeling in the world. <laughs> That's one way to look at it, I suppose. Perhaps he'll sit next to you one day. <laughs> Your face. <laughs> Sounds like you should have gone to a muggle school instead. <laughs> and nor am I. I can do without getting expelled just at the moment. <laughs> I can see we're going to have to be firm here. <laughs> no, it's a no and stop being such a bad influence. Especially if their name's Everett Clopton. I could tell him, you know, that a Ravenclaw girl's sweet on him. Perfect, really. Keeping it in the same house and all. Touched a nerve, I see. I'll have to let Everett know how much passion you have. Who doesn't like heroics? Let me guess. You enjoy talking about... astronomy? <laughs> You're just jealous because you wouldn't come within a mile of a horntail if the Triwizard Cup was in it for you. I can't say... I'm much interested, I'm afraid. What sort of tasty potions? You mean like recipes? Swoon. There's likely a reason it's called the restricted section. Probably there are potions that could be quite dangerous. Ugh, if there are, I'm definitely not going. Yes, but in all fairness, I did almost get flattened by a sterila. I'm not making it up. If I wanted you to think I was brave, I'd swap Black's beard balm for flobberworm mucus. <sighs> You two are moon mines. Literally, moon mines. I can't believe the two of you. Who would make up such a thing? I wouldn't be so foolish as to get caught flying away from school grounds. Oh, well, in that case, it was definitely me. <laughs> what? Why is that exactly? I most certainly do not. I was joking. Clearly. <gasps> you little pair of cave flappers. Yes, she can sound quite stern sometimes, but she's actually got a good heart <laughs> when it comes to flying. I honestly don't mind if you thought it would help. Do their best, though, don't they? What's that? What? What choice do they have? Must be awful, torn between two worlds. But that's what I mean, though. They do their best. I'm sure you wouldn't like it if everyone simply referred to you as that half-blood. I heard my grandmother speak about it. She swore there was another. Yes, but there was another. I'm being serious. It wasn't Scarecrow anyway. Barn sandwich. I'm serious. Oh, do please be quiet. Pair of you sound like you've been at the alley, Hotsy. <sighs> you pair are hopeless. Wish I'd never even said anything. <laughs> and a, a phoenix. Understood. I just thought it was amusing when you said she had a hippogriff <laughs> under her bed. Understood. Well, are you going to show us then? Oh. How exciting! Why not? No need to get upset about it. I'm not saying you wished you were Muggleborn. I'm allowed to have my own personal opinion. And if I think Muggleborn wizards have more fun, I can say it. <sighs> not much difference. Not much difference. Well, mine didn't either. I'm simply using that as an example. Well, obviously, the first thing is their parents don't do magic. What about that? Imagine growing up and not having to be afraid of being turned into a Murtlap. Never mind. Knew I shouldn't have brought it up. I bet muggles don't have to have discussions like this. Any wizard can take you on a carriage ride through London. What are you on about? Am I hearing this right? You're saying, you're both saying, that you take the hand of a muggle. But what could a muggle possibly offer that a wizard can't? It's absurd. Potty. Ludicrous. Sounds to me as if you're more enthralled with the idea of someone toiling for you than marrying a muggle. Hurt my feelings? <laughs> you're not hurting my feelings. Ah, <laughs> now that's a funny thought. But... I simply meant... Ugh, what's the point? Don't lose your wand. And enjoy your wilted flowers. See what? Take, for example, medicine. Muggles are tremendously creative in their efforts. Even use leeches. No, they let them suck their blood. There's really nothing to be afraid of. It's quite ingenious. It's true. Leeches are mostly carnivorous, you see. Typically prey on small invertebrates. Anticoagulant. It thins your blood so they can drink it more easily. Ah... That is entirely possible. They do secrete an anticoagulant. <laughs> they don't eat you, they exsanguinate you. Oh, please. Please let us hear your parcel tongue. I've always wanted to know what it's like. Oh, I thought it was marvellous. Gosh, I do hope we don't get set upon by snakes. Oh, <laughs> perhaps she does have a phoenix under her bed after all. I saw a first year with one the other day. Yes, Mrs Clopton. With a broomstick. Besides... 
First years are strictly forbidden from even having their own brooms in school. No, of course not. But they'll have scales on them if Black finds out. What kind of what? Hmm. Must be nice to have a wind wisp. Mind you, the yew weaver's hard to beat. Like a whippet, that one. Oh, of course. It was a wind wisp. New by the looks of it. I saw them at Spintwitch's last time I was there. Clopton will be lucky to have you as a wife. He can pinch all the knickknacks he wants, and you'll think he's innocent. I'm not taking my chances with unauthorised games. I've had enough encounters with Scalagro, thank you. A passing extremity is nothing to joke about. Well, I will. I'm not hiding them. They're horrific. Too much for some to listen to. I'm not scared of bewitched big toes. My injuries were serious. Not for idle banter over cups of tea. No! No, it was only my elbow. It was very painful. Very painful. Oh, now that would be gripping. Oh yes, a bit of death. Now we're talking. Being on the forefront of danger isn't about the most entertaining suffering. I didn't get wounded for laughs. Bland? You two are ruthless. What is it you'd see happen to me that would satisfy your need for amusement? This friendship has expired. No more Christmas cards for Hufflepuff. Ravenclaw, you were never on the list. Yes, I don't see the issue. I don't understand. Who wouldn't be enthralled by that? There's no better feeling in the world. You really should call it a snitch. Unnerving? Surely it invigorates you, fires you up to prove yourself. Hmm. Perhaps you should be one of them, then. A banshee. You be the one screaming along with the crowd. After all, they're just as important as the players. Your broom looks like it's done the rounds of every chimney in Hogsmeade. Well, now that that's sorted, shall we talk about who we think will be picked for next year's captain? But she'd already told him she'd buy him a new broom. That's an agreement. You can't go back on it for a whim. What an abysmal sister. Perhaps abysmal people don't have them. What? Why would his sister's Patronus be a big fierce bear? You've never even met her. Why would you possibly think that? Well, if she can muster the power to conjure a Patronus, I reckon the least she can do is repair your broom. Scoundrel. My broom's in perfectly good shape. Hmm. I suppose so. What astounds me is that there was anyone left alive in that match. Yes. How could any team withstand 700 fouls when some of them are outright deadly? It was 1473. I don't think a Sunday passed that my father didn't remind me. You're planning on working at the Ministry then? When we all get reported for breaking 699 quidditch rules? I for one was looking forward to winning the cup this year. How very encouraging of you. Oh, very good. You'll remember us all then, will you? It's the truth. I'd be happy if we had practiced twice a day. And who was injured anyway? Not our fault. Gryffindor was well set to take on Slytherin. I can tell you that much. Slaughtered them, we would have. Perhaps it's best Black cancelled it. I think I should be so distraught to play and then not win the thing. Ugh. Now you've really ruined my day, bringing up history of magic. Just thinking of bins makes me need a lie down. It's an absurd excuse though, isn't it? Well, I want to know how nasty. Well, for one. It'd make me feel better if I knew it was particularly gruesome. Exactly. Because if it's anything less than them being seven and a half, then it's absolutely not warranted. What? What was it? You might as well tell us now. You're right. It wasn't a good idea. No. There's Skelligro for that. He has an order named after him. I should think that would be enough. Yes. I could say I'm never eating chocolate frogs again. Possibly the biggest decision of my lifetime. Oh, of course. I was just saying that I do think Merlin is the pinnacle of what it means to be a legend. Wouldn't make me a legend. Huge! What? Young for a shopkeeper though, isn't he? Oh, yes. My mother's five years older than my father, so that's even better. At least old enough to be my father, I'd think. It's about experience, isn't it? How can Albie Weeks possibly know all that there is to know about brooms? You never agree with me. Obviously. Please could you recount the ways in which one becomes infamous? Precisely. Well, you have to do something really special, don't you? Everyone knows it. I swear she noticed. We're lucky Black doesn't teach herbology. The man's so vain, it's a wonder every portrait in the school hasn't been taken down and replaced with one of him. Has Black ever actually taught anything? Incredible. That someone could be appointed headmaster without having ever taught a class. I reckon you only like her because she waves a blind eye to your sugar quills. I should be the one to do it. Goodness, anyone would think you'd hide the man yourself. What happened with Adelaide anyway? What? Ugh, I thought you had better taste than that. Besides, I thought you were sweet on Clopton. Oh, I saw that, yes. Cricket wasn't even nearby. I think Howam was just after giving someone an earful. You were all for it last week. Then let's make it Shah. I'm only talking about a little trip, Jinx. It's not as if I'm looking to transfigure someone. You're a one to talk. 
Wasn't it you that did it last time? <laughs> My grandmother did. Yes. You know what they say about people who don't have a sense of humour. Well, will you at least be our watch? It's the best thing I've ever seen in my life. My grandfather was livid. Oh, I haven't heard that one either. But if it helps you get on board with nose-biting teacups, I'm all for it. No, she died. But her portrait's fantastic. It's the most fun you can have without getting expelled. What did you get her? For her birthday. Oh, she'd enjoy a visit from you at the house. Been years since she'd seen someone bitten by one of those cups. I am not. Couldn't have done it better myself. It was an experiment. I made it up. I thought if I said I'd put frog spawn soap in the pea soup, well, that I'd become more popular. What if I put stink pellets outside the Slytherin common room? I'm celebrating today. All but one. And Ronin told me that everyone put the wrong answer for that one. I think I did. No, I didn't. As a matter of fact, I received quite good marks on my charms test. Which is the one you're good at, then? I might possibly be inclined. What's in it for me? What about? You eat an acid pop. Hmm. Leech juice. I'm not entirely enthused. Very well. I shall continue to practice the summoning charm on my own. Akio. I'm simply saying that I'm not in favour of this persecution of first years anymore. Or of anyone, for that matter. It's just that I've been getting on quite well of late, so the thought of upsetting Scribner, well, it seems foolish. Just because there's no scorch marks on someone doesn't mean you haven't hurt them. Tormenting first years isn't fun anymore. Not since Nurse Blaney started reporting severe burns to Black. I wasn't screaming. No, of course not. What's that supposed to mean? Well, Garlic was stood right in front of me, and I was paying attention to her. I'm not sweet on Garlic. I like her style. That's all. She has an elegance about her. Anyway, I wasn't screaming. Of what? Mimulus Mimbletonia? Did it ages ago. You haven't still not done yours, have you? Yes. Well, we'll see how well you fare when a giant lethal plant brushes its spikes against you. Yes, but I wasn't to know that, was I? And there I was, cursing, straight at Garlic's face. Oh, very considerate of you. No, I quite enjoyed it. Except for the boils. That part made me feel a bit sick. Oh, stop. And if you ever come near me with stink sap, I shall scream. It wouldn't have been a common Welsh green, I can tell you that much. His fault for being a first year, isn't it? That the one about the dragon fire? Distinguishing dragons by their flame. I did mine ages ago, as soon as she assigned it. Not sure if I did it right, though. I put a lot in about the roar. Yes, well, I know that. But I also added in that it has a melodious roar, with almost a musicality to it. No, the roar of Howen. Yes, of course, the roar of the dragons. Hickoff sweets always do the trick. What? Playing a trick? I'm always up for a trick. Who's it on? Then I am definitely in. Can't go wrong with Hickoff sweets. Quick jaunt to Zonko's and you'll be set. Shockingly, I'm struggling to find the connection there. Or has your grandmother also graced us with her clearly expert opinion on the subject of memory? Your brain doesn't fill up. Staggering that your grandmother isn't making headlines in The Prophet. You're not actually taking this ludicrous theory seriously, are you? What? You can't be serious. Who on earth would be such a moon mind as to count their heartbeats? Preposterous! Oh, for heaven's sake. Perhaps I'll simply have a skive instead. Why take such a perilous chance? I say we give up schooling altogether. Head to your grandmother's. Evidently, she is the true font of knowledge. Oh, for Merlin's sake. Fine. My brain's full, which will explain why I have no recollection of how much I owe you. Precisely. The entire notion is absurd. What? No, for those butterbeers you bought last week in Hogsmeade, that I have no recollection of. What a shame. I don't feel well. Not a chance. Last time I was in there, she'd spilled a bottle of Skelligro, and I swear I saw her topping it up. Now, but what if she did? And what if that Skelligro doesn't work properly now? now? I don't know. Water or something. Well, what if, for instance, it only grew half a bone? Or they grew in a funny shape? What about that? I was feeling a bit anxious. So she gave me a tonic of some sort. Had a bit of crocodile heart in it, I do believe. Well, that's the thing. I'm thinking she mixed them up or something, and some skelligro went in my tonic. What, the tonic? Yes. Yes, helped quite a bit, I'd say. I think I'm growing an extra toe. I already have the wormwood. No, I do. I have everything. Of the elixir? Yes, of course. Haven't decided yet. I don't want to get in trouble, and I think it's only supposed to be brewed in sixth year. It's called elixir to induce euphoria? My cousin told me it feels like Christmas. Very likely. Of course, 
I'll have to charge you. Was only asking. Yes, that is a good point. I'd rather that than being left standing about like an abandoned erumpent. Why? Because you don't have to ask someone. What? Yes, of course I am. And I don't feel like an abandoned erumpent. Just that I could feel like one. At a dance. To a dance? Oh, Merlins. What a relief. I did say I was sorry. I won't tell anyone again. Promise. By whom? Three of us. Oh, yes. I much prefer that idea. Yes. Any dances you've heard about coming up? Yes. It was definitely a good drawing there. You got a good likeness of him. Not that one who makes things up. I doubt Scribner would stand for that. Say no more. You could have a hundred good reasons. None of them will work with Scribner. Time to give up, I'd say. Oh, that part I completely understand. That's why you do those drawings of black, isn't it? To go against the rules. Not my point at all. There. You learn something about yourself. Something that might have just saved you from being expelled. Oh, well, in that case, I give up. Get caught for all I care. I heard one talking about sewing a sock the other day. How utterly revolting. Oh, really? Hmm. I'd prefer they not be allowed to attend. I do like a few of their carols. Although they get all the facts wrong and clearly think any sort of vision is an angel. A recipe book? What a fun game. Well, no point discussing because I've already found a fatal flaw in our plan. I could test you. Not sure why she'd fuss so much. It was only one page in a book. Finding folded down corners of books in the library. Ones that Scribner missed. It involves risking unplanned encounters with Scribner. I say we play a round of gobstones instead. You already know the dates of every goblin rebellion that hasn't even happened yet. Then I shall test you both at the same time. What? Why? You're saying I need to take time to test each of you on the dates of goblin rebellions separately. How utterly odd. What? Why? I'm surprised they're allowed to bring them into class, though. And that would be ridiculous. <laughs> Perhaps he's an animagus and he's a cat and he's got a unicorn. Are you a moon mind? I don't believe you two. You'd have us overrun with nifflers if it was up to you. Anyone got any chocolate frogs? I could just fancy one. Listen to the pair of you. You're completely potty. I... It... The horn. Obviously, it's the horn. Which you could stab us with? Nuzzle? It wouldn't just nuzzle me. It'd impale me. Ugh. I can see I can't get anywhere with you two. I'm not. Besides, what if it vanished in the middle of the lesson? Ugh, this is getting a bit grim. Do you think we could get back to pancakes? Don't you mean they know our recipe for pancakes? What? Pancakes? Do you think a horse can go faster than a broom? What'd be fun? I was only curious. A broom's better though, isn't it? I already asked Kagawa. She said no. Yes, I suppose I'd keep that one under my hat if I were you. I'd keep that one under my hat if I were you. Yes, especially if they're faster than brooms. I wish I came from money, except being able to buy whatever you want in Hogsmeade. Oh, can I get one too? I still don't get it. I like Ronan's jokes. I find him very witty. Don't listen to them. I think you're at least as funny as Peeves. It was terrifying. You weren't there in my dream. Their little tongues were all around my face, dabbing at me. It wasn't a puff scheme. It was a herd of them. Or whatever you call them when there's a lot of them. A lot? Yes, dabbing. No. It was definitely dabbing, and I shan't be comfortable going to sleep again now after that awful nightmare. Oh, that'd be good. Yes, that's what I need. A soothing draught. Mine would be the Neasel that lurks about our back garden at home. I didn't say cat. I said Neasel. Definitely. Ugh, oh, I knew I shouldn't have told you. Sharp didn't think much of it at all. He wrote on it. I don't think much of this at all. Yes, except I was looking at the wrong line, so I got them all out of order. Oh, well that's very comforting, isn't it? And what if this attacking measle deems my mere presence untoward? Yes. <sighs> I knew he hated me. The man's a monster. I swear he'd prefer running this school if it had no one in it. I'm sure that he hates me. Well, I will, won't I? Doesn't matter anyway. Not like Sharp thinks much of anybody's work. But he wasn't even talking to me. Not to mention, he gives out an absurd amount of detentions. If Black's mission is to gain respect, I'd say it's impossible. He gave me five for leaning my hands on the desk while he was speaking. He was having a go at Weasley, telling her she needs to be more firm with her students. <laughs> I'd say. I hear his residence is charming. Grim old place. Perhaps you can take a trip and they'll let you have tea in his chair. I'm not fibbing. Why would I fib? He's a squib. Ended up working at a muggle factory. Does well he does. Does all that newfangled plumbing. They say he's marvellous with a septic tank. My grandfather's a plumber. I'm not making it up. I mean... It's only what I heard. Oh, I've always wanted to play cricket. Brilliant game. They play with a bat. 
No, it's a wooden one. I'm listening. Was just wondering about the bat. The wood. Doesn't matter. Ah, well, that'd be why we don't play cricket. We playing then? Clever though, secrecy, isn't it? Good what they did, coming up with that statute. She's definitely my favourite. What do you mean? Ah, I remember that. Yes, that was funny. Smashed some dishes, apparently, with the cries. Shame, though, about the cricket. And the thing is, they might like to use a real bat. I thought she was, yes, I remember now. Not really good to have mandrakes in a kitchen, is it, when you think about it? Oh, you can mark my words, I shall have my revenge. I don't care if Quidditch never comes back, it will happen. Bothered about? I should think I'm betrayed, wounded to the core, my trust in my brethren forever broken. The thing is... What? No, no, this isn't about ink or the phlegm of magical worms. This is about being wronged. Do? They didn't do anything. It's what they said. That's what has sparked this inferno of scorn. This is about being crossed, beyond repair, friendship forsaken and left to burn in the pyre of a phoenix. What? No. Said I. Fly like a diracle. Well, if ever our buffoon of a headmaster comes to his senses and we play again, I shall charm the quaffle. Well, don't I need to? I don't know. Avenge myself? Just in case Astoria noticed. I shall face the wrath of the Department of Magical Games and Sports if I have to, to reclaim my honour. To attack him? We'll see who flies like a diracle. And it was in front of Astoria Cricket, so it was especially humiliating. Uh, yes, I think it is. Really? Well, that's far less likely to get me expelled. That confounded man. I suppose she's not wrong. I wish he'd get dragon pox. I don't think they'd last through one game. What's that? That and his precious beard. If what's in your family? True. Except what we need is a Professor Black Poison. Who? Who's lucky? Yes, of course practice is good. I must say, your philosophies on sport seem somewhat fickle. I'd say the bludgers were practically avoiding you for fear of embarrassment. Yes, we don't mean to offend you in any way. I was just trying to think of someone who was a worse player than you. So that I'm clear, a rat was in your Wellington boot. I would have cast Glacius. I reckon he'd have an orchestra if they'd let him. Oh. Niffler's better than a rat, I suppose. On their brooms. Make them hard to hold on to. Why would he think his son dead? Oh dear, how awful. What happened to his son? Yes, I should think I have a new respect for him. What? Why would you do that? I never have. Right from when I was a child. I couldn't even stand on the landing without feeling dizzy. I didn't. But what choice did I have? I was too afraid to tell my father. He was a star seeker in his day. But why? As long as I fly and do my part, why should they care? Wish I'd never said anything now. It is in my family. You won't tell anyone, will you? Why did you even tell me this? This doesn't support the suggestion at all that I tell my father. But you can't tell on me. Kagawa might stop me from playing, and then my father would find out. Oh, and how did that go? I know we're not supposed to go down there. I just thought, Miss Peck from Rude and Peck said a customer lost a diracle around here. I'm very sorry, father. Only she said I might earn a reward. Uh, instead, I just wasted our time. Ah, well, not meant to be. Also, I may have knocked over a dustbin back there. There you are! Ha! Huh, finally! I'll have enough for that wind wisp. She always gives you higher marks than me. Well, everyone knows that dangers residing amidst Devil's Snare involve strangulation. Everyone knows you're Garlic's favourite. Yes, and I believe Garlic wasn't fully impressed that all your knowledge was potty. Of course. We have to do something to keep you in her good graces, seeing as I'm her favourite and all. <laughs> oh, that's so unfair. It was obviously as old as Merlin, and I bet she knew it. I almost had a treasure once, from my grandmother. An enchanted hourglass. It would flow quicker if you were in a boring class, so the teacher would think it was later. You merrily recanted that Devil's Snare is dangerous on account of its propensity to stab people. You could be done a class in half the time, would have been brilliant for potions. Oh, I thought about it. I looked into us getting one, but apparently they can eat your leg off, so it wasn't ideal. <laughs> Ugh, my grandmother changed her mind. I probably shouldn't have mentioned about using it in potions. Then in the end, it didn't shrink. The purse. I thought it was moke skin, but I'd obviously been taken in by the vendor. Yes, all right, clever clogs. I knew I shouldn't have told you. And? Were they not? Obviously it's me. <laughs> I don't feel so bad then. That does sound rather untoward. What do you mean, watching? What sort of person spies on someone eating? <gasps> what if I was? It's the same food we eat, bar a few exceptions. What do you mean, muggle pudding? 
It's the same trifle we eat when we go to your uncle's house in Chigwell. Because I've never been to the house of a muggle, let alone eaten at one of their establishments. What? What is your foul mind conjuring up now? That's completely untrue. But if you ever tell a soul that I was at a muggle establishment, I shall hex you, you putrid, wretched excuse for a wizard. You're despicable. I hope you get lured away by an Urkling and eaten by a Lethifold and then stomped by an Arumpant. You're likely right that they have an advantage. Well, I mean, it only works if your sister was good at the sport. No good if your sister was hopeless at Quidditch. In fact, it could be a detriment to have a sister who, let's say, had bad habits in the game. That's assuming your sister was a good player. Yes. What if your sister had practiced on the moors without the need for accuracy? She'd be abysmal in a match. You've got a you, Weaver. It's the grip on the broom, though, isn't it? Without a firm grip, you're lost. Neglect. That's what I'm saying. Count yourself lucky you have no skill on the pitch. At least you haven't learned a bad habit. How's that? No. My parents quite dote on me. Ugh. Oh, yes, thank you. I just really wish I was neglected. Oh, gosh. I wish I was neglected. Eleven. Eleven points for a goal. I suppose you're right. Scoring fifteen goals should certainly warrant a win in my book. Fifty. Fifty for a goal. What would you have it be, then? If it wasn't 10 points for a goal and 150 for the snitch. I see. You get three goals and the other team catches the snitch and then you're even. It actually does seem fair to me. It is the nature of sport, isn't it? There has to be a winner and a loser. I remember you saying you had an inverted kneecap and could never get on the broom right. Anyway, I thought you'd never played Quidditch. You don't know a lot about Quidditch, do you? Don't be absurd. If it were any less funny, it would be an acromantula carcass. It's a revolting trick. I've seen you running up to the astronomy tower, though. You're even first there sometimes. That's an awful thought, and I'm not sure I can ever forgive you for it. Absolutely. If you slipped so much as a stale bun in the vicinity of the headmaster, you'd lose your head. I agree, but that's third years for you. More confident than when they started, but still trying to prove themselves. Because he was overly confident. The mere mention of Zonkos, and he acts like a wild thing with his tails. I wouldn't have. I'd wager a six-inch essay on goblin rebellions that that boy's never spent a nut at Zonkos, been in detention for sneezing too loudly in the library. You'd have thought he'd been had by Dementors. I didn't realise it was the exploding type. That, and he's terrified of getting detention, told me straight to my face. Funny. I should think a Jarvi would have had more composure. I thought my entire mouth was going to explode. I'm sure I'd have found it funny if I was watching someone else nearly choke to death on an exploding bonbon. I thought perhaps you'd pick some up from Steepleys. They have bonbons sometimes. I'd say more of a popping with a bit of burning, although that could have been the humiliation. What? First years? Yes, <laughs> I suspect she has a new least favourite scent now. The rest was first years. I should think I did look flushed. Perhaps she'll get some for you next time, and we'll see how you fare. I hurled them as far as I could. <laughs> Obviously, that's when everything changed. Yes, and I got the girl who says the smell of flobberworm mucus is her least favourite scent. They ran straight off to Kagawa, asking why blood just smelt so bad. I don't think they'd been hit by dung bombs before. They'd certainly never played Quidditch. I'd hardly say that's the point of history. It's not as if history's something one can avoid, is it? But back to my point. Oh, was that from the three broomsticks? I don't think she makes those for just anyone. You were lucky. Every day isn't the same as every other day. And the things that impact us the most are what forge our history. But when you look back at, say, something like the statute, one could argue that 1692 was especially unique. They call it chemistry. I wonder how similar it is to potions. Oh, you've had a potion go horribly wrong, have you? Well, yes. I see. Only you said, so I thought you might have. Oh, and what happened? And you consider this... Nothing drastic. Yes, I do recall now. And Professor Garlic knocked it over and we ran out. Hallucinating? I see. So you didn't get hurt at all? Oh, I remember that day. Yes, in Greenhouse 3. Well, I did say to distract her by asking how to handle flesh-eating slugs. Oh, yes. Yes, I do. The toadstools had more than proven their name and were hopping into the mandrake pots. You after making a befuddlement draft? Well, it's not you. 
Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, that's rotten to enchant your quill. How foul. Fair enough. I'll trade you Sneezewort and Scurvygrass in exchange for letting bygones be bygones. Friends, what's to say one family's more important than another? I mean, surely it's who has the most money. Is there anything your father didn't nearly die of? Except... I think Howen should be allowed to bring any beast she wants into class. Oh, Nifflers! Mm, I suppose you're right. What? What would be the issue with the unicorn? Nine lives. Don't mind him. He's just scared of anything that has more than two legs. What? Yes, you could have warned us there. Not sure I'll have a pleasant day. What, with thinking about a dead canary? Since when do you know what goes on at muggle schools? Oh yes, I've heard that too. Apparently it started in the 1600s. I know, and it was made by my grandmother. She enchanted it to keep my hair tidy. It was only Accio. I don't see what the fuss is about. <laughs> I thought it was funny. You shouldn't be so serious all the time. I'd only dropped my hat and I'm certain no one saw me. It's just it was blowing away and it's my favourite. Oh, how horrible. Shouldn't you tell Weasley? What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> I find the price is quite reasonable in Hogsmeade. Oh, it is. It's incredibly difficult to keep it tidy. Don't be silly. There's nothing to be gained from coming from money. Oh, stop. Tell you what. Next time we go to Hogsmeade, I'll treat you to a butterbeer. Yes, of course. Fine. Next time we're at the Three Broomsticks, remind me. Now, enough of this. You're all making me feel very self-conscious. I don't see what the harm would be myself. As long as you promised not to break into anyone's trunk. Wasn't that first year keeping one under her bed? Oh, romance in the air. I like Thomas Brown. He always takes the time to show me where all the new books are. Don't leave me out. I'm always up for a visit to that shop. He's a clever man, that Thomas Brown. Uh, no. I suppose not, come to think of it. My parents are quite generous now that you mention. What does tilling a field involve, exactly? That was an accident, and I blame Professor Garlic for not reminding me that the watering can was full. I'll have you know I do very well in Herbology. Some even think I'm Garlic's favourite. Thank you. Don't worry, I shan't be borrowing that again. I think I lost a week of my life trying to get through Chapter 1. I almost fell asleep the last time you started talking about what Bins had been teaching. <laughs> what? Fine. I shall keep my techniques to myself, since you find them so... Oh, you absolute scoundrel! Insult me, then ask for my help, not a chance! Lucky to have him alive, you mean? Some of us enjoyed Quidditch. I got one for simply saying hello. He called it an unwarranted approach. He definitely hates me. Pruitt and Parkinson. That's what she said. Why would she lie? They're her grandparents. I'm sure if she says they're both purebloods. However, if his mission's to be the least popular headmaster Hogwarts ever had, then I'd say he's well on his way. Wait, now you're both getting carried away. Now you're the ones making up stories. What? What point? How is randomly accusing someone of lying a point? Because she's telling us. And they're her grandparents. What does that have to do with anything? He didn't agree. What? Making what up? Well... I think we can all agree that no one would make that up. That's preposterous. Ugh, for Merlin's sake. Who in their right mind would brag that their grandfather's good with a septic tank? Oh, I'm sure you're exaggerating. I find that thought rather unlikely since, well, things were more uncivilised back then. Superstition ran amok. How cruel. What? Cricket. Oh, yes. Didn't mean to be rude. I'm very sorry. My friend told me they have different tongues. Ugh, that is a horrible idea. Oh, oh, I see. W what do you think it would be like, then? Like, a snake? Of a muggle tongue? Looking like a snake? If Black doesn't reverse his decision, I'm afraid you'll never have the chance for revenge. Yes. Tell us where you heard this fact. See, like, a snake? She simply says I'll grow into them. I like her, Astoria. Never had cross words with her, and she wants to help me catch a bow truckle. I'm fairly sure that charming the quaffle is against the rules. That would definitely be considered a foul. I wish they'd lock him in the greenhouse with the mandrakes. In all fairness, muggles do make teas that can help one fall asleep more easily. They do use herbs too. They might be marvellous at it. Well, I suppose we'll never know, will we? I know. The man's more obsessed with blood purity than the well-being of his students. I overheard him talking with Kagawa the other day. She was pleading with him to bring Quidditch back. I didn't mean for you to get wound up. I take it you won't be coming with us for Cherry Trifle at my auntie's house. Oh. Well, I didn't mean you. I'm sure another house would take you in anyway. But would the man listen? No. 
All he kept on about was his reputation and how injured adolescents were a blight. It's a wonder they don't do away with Slytherin altogether. The man's such an embarrassment to the house. You should have heard her. Promised to have impeccable safety regulations in place. Nurse Blaney on hand. Still, at least we have garlic. She's lovely. A Professor Black antidote. <laughs> Never hurts if it's in your family, though. Has Black even ever taught a class in his whole entire life? Practice is good, though, isn't it? Lucky, though, aren't they? Sporting prowess. I think some people are simply born with it. People who inherit a skill in athletics. I reckon Imelda Reyes comes from a good lineage of flyers. It's a wonder you didn't collide with the ground. We're doing it for your own good. Not a bad idea, that. Yes, tricky one, that. There is that second year, the seeker who likes to hum a lot. He sold me a second-rate one. I know it. I think it was used. Yes. I've a good mind to tell Madame Kagawa so that she doesn't recommend him anymore. Dust. As soon as I had it outside in the light, I could see it. Dust. All over. Oh, you think I should ask? Tell him about the dust. What? Hmm. Yes. I see your point. I need to tell him about the dust. But I paid full price. I feel Mr. Weeks should take into consideration the dust and amend his sales price accordingly. Fair, I suppose. I suppose I could simply forget about it. It has been in the rain after all. No, I can't say it does. No, it did really. Yes, it's a good one, that. Wouldn't that make their legs stronger from all the walking? I should think they'd be the same, wouldn't they? What about merely improving what skill you have, becoming better, without the purpose being to win or to lose? Oh, I see. Um, makes sense then. Where do they walk to? Muggles. When they're walking. Where do they walk to? Suppose they wouldn't be walking to a broom shop, would they? Oh, I am. Although I must say I do like to walk. Stop it, Peeves. You'll get us in trouble. <sighs> and you're both wrong anyway. It was Hephaestus Gore. Peeves, enough. You'll get us all detention. 